Good morning. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Good evening to friends in North America and hello to anyone watching on replay. I am Nancy Hepker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in Melbourne, Australia. And today I'm going to make some cards for that I'm going to use as customer thank yous for uh, people who placed orders with me in October. Um, and I'm going to do a couple different color variations on the same card. And uh, what I'm using today is the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set, which is part of the Jar of Flowers suite. Um, I find this really versatile. I've used it a lot and I'm going to keep using it, I can tell. And I've gone ahead I'm actually prepared today and I've mounted stuff up on my Stamparatus, which is my favorite way when I want to do some precision lining up of things and multiples. And here's a one that I, this is my test one and it came out great. So we're going to keep going from there. I'm going to stamp some more just like this and I'll show you how I did that. Um, and then we'll work on finishing them off. So I have a number of I've got three <laughs> that's a number three pieces of whisper white cardstock that I've cut in my first layer which in Australia or a4 is um, 10 by 14.4 uh, and in um, letter size that would be what four by five and a quarter and then I've got a smaller piece uh, which I have done 10 by 7 centimeters, uh, which would be approximately, I'm looking at my cheat over here, oh, approximately 2 and 5 eighths by 4 inches, maybe. Um, and then uh, we're, we've got a mat that I'll talk about later on. Anyhow, we're going to layer these up and um, when I moved here, I brought some removable tape runner adhesive, but I haven't found any since it's run out. So I'm going to use and show you the other way you can do it, either with snail, if you still have some, or with stamp and seal, which you know is not my favorite adhesive, but it is useful at times. Um, just put a little bit on the back of a piece like that. And then what I'm doing off camera here is um, I'm tapping it several times on my jeans. Uh, just to pick up, see, some denim lint. And then it won't be so sticky when I put it on here. And I'm going to get it as centered as I can. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the grid, the grid helps. And you develop an eye with practice. So there we go. And now I have my um, sunflower mounted up here and I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink. You can also use uh, the Stays On Jet Black um, or any color you wanted, but for this one I want black. And I'm just going to stamp it there and hold it. And I could have put my magnet on there, but I didn't. And it's okay because I've got a good impression. So I'm just going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing again. And I'm thinking I better not press my luck too much. And I'm going to go ahead and put that very strong magnet on there. And we'll ink up the sunflower again. Hi, Renata. And we'll stamp that there. There we go. And then while I have this in place, I am going to clean off my sunflower. Otherwise I get ink everywhere and I've got my sentiment all mounted up and it should fit right in there. Uh, it says thanks a bunch. So that'll be good for 
thank you cards for customers. There we go. I'm going to do one more just the same way. So take a bit of a small piece of cardstock, put some stamp and seal on it, or snail tape runner. And see, that gives me the lint. I'm pressing it on my jeans. That's my high tech. High tech, low tack. How's that? Line that up. go and since it's all mounted up let's start with the sentiment that's the nice thing about the stamparatus it doesn't matter what order you do them in because they all line up the way they should so there's the sentiment I'm gonna clean that off and flip Do some more inking. And stamping. Yeah, and the nice thing is if I didn't think that it had stamped really well, I could just ink it up again and, and press it again, and it would be perfectly lined up. And now we're gonna flip that around again. So you can see, once I got it all set up, it's really quick and easy. I could keep going on and stamp all morning and have a hundred of these, but I don't need or want a hundred of these. So this one will be the last one. I don't think that inked very well. There we go. So I don't know if you follow my personal Facebook page, but I did post two things this morning. One is a really pretty sunrise picture, about the only benefit of getting up at the crack of early with the dog. And um, we have reached a dozen donuts here in Victoria. That means we have had 12 days in a row of zero new cases here new I don't know why Siri chimed in um, zero new cases and zero deaths from the coronavirus so we are happy happy here in Victoria okay so I am going to pull these apart carefully they're still they are still funny sticky, that's for sure. Um, and in fact, I'm going to drop my picture frame and bring in my silicone sheet, which is great because nothing sticks to that. So I will pull these others apart too. I think maybe it's good to keep each one with its mate. So I'm just pulling it apart, but I'm keeping them together. So this first one I'm going to do in shades of yellow. And I brought in my blends. These are all my yellow blends. I'm going to start here with So Saffron Light. And I'm not sure I'm going to use all of these actually. Yeah, I'm probably not even gonna bother with that. Um, here's So Saffron Dark. I'm trying to stay in the lines, but not having so much luck here. Just over that 
too. So I'm just doing an all over base coat with that. And I'm just gonna keep going up my shade spectrum. I'm gonna add in a little bit. Of, this is Daffodil Delight Light. And I'm not coloring everything. I'm just sort of layering up some colors. And this is Daffodil Delight Dark. And I'm gonna concentrate that mostly where there's the shading from the stamp itself. Saffron Dark. I'm not sure I want any of this Mango Melody. Let me see how that looks here. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's the Light Mango Melody. Layer some of that on the center there. Again, just layering up some color. They're not too different, but they, they build up after a while. I'm gonna go back to the oh, light to the saffron. And I'm just gonna use that kind of as a blender to sort of blend everything together. Okay, so that's that side. Let's now we get to do the same thing on this one. So how's everything over there? I know we're all super happy and relieved about the election. Certainly we are here. And I think all of my friends there are too. Be nice if uh, the Trumpster manned up and conceded, but you know, who expected him to? So, again, just layering up some color. And now I'm gonna come in with that light so saffron and use it as a blender to kind of blend all of these shades together. that one. I'm going to go ahead and make one card fully so you guys can see it in case you have to take off somewhere. And again, we did that on the sheet so that this didn't stick to my paper. And that's going to go on 
there. So this is half a centimeter larger than my Whisper White piece here. Or in the US, I would do, on letter paper, I would do a quarter of an inch bigger for my mat. And then we'll bring this piece back in. And that's going to layer on there. So that's how it's, that's why it's called a spotlight, because you're really just spotlighting that part of the flowers. Um, am I going to do it on dimensionals? Let's try it on dimensionals. I'm going to bring in my black dimensionals since we're working on black here. These are pretty nifty. I tell you, I decided this weekend, or last weekend, that um, I wish they'd do those foam adhesive. First, I wish they would do the foam adhesive sheets, and once they did that, I wish they'd do them out in black. I'm never happy, never satisfied, always wanting more. So, <coughs> let's see how we do getting this lined up. I'm trying to eliminate the shadow effect, which means I probably should have cut these mats just a smidge bigger, but I think most people won't pay much attention. And then this is a piece of Bumblebee cardstock, which is not one of the colors that I used over there because Stampin' Up! decided we had so many shades of yellow, we didn't need another one. So they didn't make blends in Bumblebee, but that is just fine because this combination works really nicely, I think, to just go ahead and all blend right in, so to speak. I don't know where that came from. That wasn't there before, was it? Eh, there's always something. So what do you think? Should we add a few rhinestones to it? Uh, Roseanne asked, what did I think of on stage? I thought that it was really, really well done. I was really pleased. Um, Having been to live ones, you know, it it lacked, you know, you, it's when you're in that big convention hall and the music's booming and people are excited and whatever, just the, it's electric. And this was not electric, but it was exciting and it was fun. And um, yeah, I thought it, I thought it flowed well. It did. They did a really good job. I thought. Um, so I was pleased with it. And I was fortunate to be here with um, my teammates. Ha, look at that. Um, who, my upline Kylie uh, did is, well, she got permission stamping up to broadcast the Thursday night recognition event to her whole team via Zoom, which worked really nicely. Okay, so there's one. Um, and then we just kept the Zoom going all day, Friday and Saturday. Um, and so if, you know, for those people who had registered, we, we basically did a, a two device thing. I can see on the video, this, this isn't straight. It's harder to see in person, but I can see it's not straight. I'll try to do a better job on the next one. Um, so we watched on Zoom, no. So I watched on stage on my computer screen and I had the Zoom with my teammates set up on my iPad right there. And it, um, it was nice because during the sessions we just watched and then in between the sessions we came back and we chatted about stuff. And teammates who hadn't signed up for on stage were able to come on and just sort of be, be part of the crowd, even though they weren't really, they didn't really get what we were talking about necessarily, but that's okay. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna do um, Magenta Madness for my card base. And so this is my light Magenta Madness blend. And we'll see how this one goes. But that, so that sort of provided some of the 
camaraderie and excitement that that I get from going live um, without having to leave my home, which was kind of nice actually last week because I'm still struggling a little bit with doing everything that I want to do and having Noah, so it was good. So I, I had a good experience. I learned some things. I enjoyed the stamping projects. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Roseanne, did you buy the um, Dandy Garden stuff to be able to make the projects as designed, or did you swap out for stuff you already had? And Gladys, you too, because I think you attended, didn't you? Well, and there's Megan. Hello, Megan. Okay, and then here's a darker dark magenta madness let's see how that goes and then I'm bringing in a bit of um, melon mambo which is darker still, but still kind of a magenta. I would have called it a magenta before we had this one. Again, just trying to add a little bit of depth to things. And then this is the dark. Melon Mambo. Yeah, I like the set too. And um, for the product purchase premiere, I bought the, the other half of the bundle. And that'll come probably Thursday or Friday, I think. I'm excited. What do we think? Now, if I go back over this, what would I use as a blender if I wasn't using those? Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just going to do this one. So again, I'm doing a spotlight technique with the Celebrate Sunflower set, which I really like. I found it very useful, versatile. I like the dyes that go with it, but I'm loving it without the dyes too. I'm using it probably 50-50. And I'd say the dyes I use 50% of the time without the stamp set. So I think it's been, been a good thing. Um, and I'm making thank you cards for my October customers. Magenta Madness. Good. That's what I wanted it to be. I have zero artistic training. I would generally say I have zero artistic aptitude, um, but I love these blends because they make me feel like I can be an artist. see people doing much much nicer fancier things than I do with these but this is what I've got time and patience for right now so that's what I'm going with okay 
Okay. So there's that one. And I will bring in that. See if we can get my eyes to work straight for all this. this one. See, it is kind of ripped a little bit. That's okay, because it's getting covered. I think this one I'm just going to go flat. Let's see how we do with that. That looks straighter. And then here's the Magenta Madness card base. What if I did a, a stroke of one of the yellows on the magenta? Let me see how that goes. it a little bit orangey but it does liven it up a little bit good idea there we go number two and then I thought for the third one let's go uh, my base is going to be Bermuda Bay so I brought in pool party and Bermuda Bay goodness So that's the light. Yeah, I love the cards and I love how they get us changing up styles. Like I put one on my blog today and I was saying how much I like that we've gone back to using smaller bits of designer series paper instead of always having the big panels. I mean, I like the big panels and they're easy, easy to do. Um, but it's nice sometimes to switch it up and be doing the other styles too. So, so 
So that's the pool parties. And now I'm going to switch over to some Bermuda Bay add in here. Let's get the darker parts. darkest one definitely down here and I think we're going to come back in once more with the lightest pool party. And let's see if we can get some blending going here. Yeah, I'm a blue girl. There's very little blue that I don't like. This one up. Something didn't get cut straight on this one. Oh well, handmade and all that. Let's try again, see if I can get it straight on the dimensionals. Stroke of light magenta, here we go. you want it? This one might have to go to you. That helps a bit, maybe. y'all think. It's 
livens it up a little bit. It does. See how straight I can get this here. Okay, get my paper straight, get this straight on the grid. Stand up. There we go, that's straighter. Yeah, I agree, the very light blues and then mount it on a lighter blue card base. Okay, I like the magenta in there, I'll admit it. But I like it better once I blend it over it. I don't know why. Well, maybe, who knows, why not? Okay. There we go, folks. That is what I planned for today. I have done three versions of this spotlight card. Now you got me looking at everything again. Okay, so three thank you cards with the spotlight technique using the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. Hmm. And that is what I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. Um, I am probably going to pop back on uh, today is Wednesday my time, so Thursday or Friday, depending on, well, whenever I get my box from Stampin' Up, I think it's going to be Thursday or Friday. It may not be until the weekend or early next week, but I will pop on with an unboxing video. So keep your eye out. If you haven't selected to know when I go online, on Facebook Live, um, track that down and, and select it. And um, yeah, I'll also be posting it over on YouTube. So if, if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, you can do that and uh, get notified when I post videos there as well. So um, join me again next week, same time, same place. Everybody's clocks are staying the same. And then um, also next week, the night of the 18th, uh, in North America and the morning of the 19th here in Australia is my Zoom social crafting session. Uh, it's very similar to what we were doing on um, the Crazy Crafters 
with on stage bring something to work on or nothing at all and just hang out and chat uh, we'll spend an, an hour or two together and uh, just hang out and socialize so uh, feel free to join in then uh, that's much more interactive of course because it's on zoom but otherwise I will see you back here same time same place next week for another project or two and uh, yeah have a great week bye bye